spent $3,000 to live inside of Minecraft using one of these, an omnidirectional treadmill. It may sound complicated, but basically what it means is that I have to use my body to do everything. In order to run, I have to physically run. In order to chop down trees, I have to actually chop and punch down the trees. And in order to swim, oh god, we'll get to that oh, a little later. Is it even possible to play and conquer Minecraft in these conditions? Or is the world of Minecraft just not meant to be lived in? I don't know, let's go find out. Huh? The transition was supposed to happen here, I don't want to go! Our journey starts off like all Minecraft journeys do, alone and afraid in the middle of nowhere. To keep myself from wandering aimlessly, I created four goals we had to accomplish in order to consider this a win, with the first of course being to get our tools. Everyone knows that you can't craft without materials, and you can't materials without tools. I walked over to the first trees I saw and immediately learned just how exhausting my quest was going to be. Oh god. This is going to be agonizing. And I instantly noticed there was some iron in the cave right next to my spawn. After a few trees and a couple hundred punches, I had just enough wood to do my first virtual reality crafting. And after a bit of awkward menu navigation and remembering how to make a stick, I finished our first task in record time. Having tools was essential for our journey, not just because I needed them to get better equipment, but also because punching concrete 50 times to break a single block would send both of my arms into the emergency room. With a task bar full of equipment, I was ready to embark on our quest of finding a meal by literally running around. I spotted a few cows and I did what must be done. Cows don't fight back. Instead, they run when they're hit, meaning I had to full on sprint after him to get our first Slap. piece of meat. Just listen to how tired I was. Holy moly, that was hard. You, stop looking. About two cows and one chicken later, our food problem was solved. Okay, not forever, but enough to fuel me for our next task, which is quite possibly the most important task on the list, building our house. Judging by the time I had already spent playing, I had at most 12 minutes left to escape the cold clutches of death. If a cow could break my ankles and make me this exhausted, I didn't want to be out in the night where the actual enemies could beat me until I died. So I had to solve this issue before nightfall. I rushed around and I grabbed some wood, but the vibes near the spawn point were just off. And because of it, I wasn't really excited to build my house anywhere near it, which is when I spotted this island across the water. This island, it called to my heart. For some reason, I knew that it was home the second I laid my eyes on it. But unfortunately, it was across a massive body of water, which is one of my biggest phobias. Oh god. You see, when I was younger, I almost drowned. Not that much younger, it was about a year ago. But knowing that across this body of water was a place that I could call home, I knew what had to be done. Oh. Oh. God. It's so hard. Oh my god. I was exhausted, but in this moment of rest, I realized it wasn't just my heart that was beating. It was also me beating my fears, and it made me feel unstoppable. It doesn't feel good. Oh. 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 Oh my god. Unfortunately, nighttime was well on its way, and since I only had three wood on me, it seemed like I was going to spend it homeless. But then, due to some sort of cosmic luck I can't even begin to comprehend, this happened. Oh! Oh sh There's a village here! Yo! How lucky is that? We can just move in with these guys! A village. Basically, the answer to all of my problems was within arm's reach. Or in this case, a light job. I entered the homes of these poor, unsuspecting villagers, and I took everything I needed. They had bread, they had a compass, they had crafting tables. But for some reason, I couldn't find a bed. Instead of risking my life to search around in the night, I had to get comfortable. Oh, oh. Oh, f yeah, we could sit. Oh, 
Oh, oh man. So I went into one of the houses and built myself a boat so that I can sit down. I spent my time off relaxing and rereading the things I had to get done. By morning, I needed to find a bed I could call my own so that we could officially have our house. Letting my guard down in the morning and thinking I was safe in the village, I searched around. And then this happened. That's not correct. One of these places um, excuse has to me. <laughs> If he kills me, we're gonna have to swim back. Oh my god, my nose is running. I continued my search, robbed a few houses, and that's when I saw it. It wasn't much, but it was home. Bro, let me... Yes. Respawn point set. With our house settled and our tummies full, our tools ready and our knees jello, I finally managed to find a place to call my own. Okay, not really. There was a dude who lived there as well, and we kind of shared the bed sometimes, but I don't want to get into it. Scoot over, bro. That's our bed now. Which meant we only had one task left. Our hardest task of all. Getting an iron set of armor. That is huge. He is so big. What do you mean by that? It was finally time for me to mine. By this point, we had only been playing for almost an hour, but since I was physically doing every task in real life, I was starting to get tired. That looks sus. I made a little hole in the wall and I started to dig, and after about 20 minutes of searching, I came up short, which sucked extra hard because of all of the manual labor I was putting in. <laughs> On my way back to the house, I remembered that I saw a cave earlier and set my sights on a new target. Plus, this cave had charcoal, which I needed if I was going to dig any further. Unfortunately, this cave also had a guardian. Now, if fighting the cow was any indication of my combat prowess, a ranged enemy was a death sentence. But I wasn't just gonna let a nobodied nobody stop me. I know. I know. This guy's so strong! Oh, oh, I need... After defeating our enemy, I started my expedition to the unexplored depths and learned just how deep this cave actually was. I searched and I searched for a crumb of iron until I heard a pretty unfortunate familiar sound. Right there, that, that, that noise. That's, a, that's an enderman. I can't deal with that, bro. That would actually make me shit my pants. Now, if you've never heard of me before, you probably wouldn't know this, but I don't deal with jump scares very well. I gotta go check on my turtles. If this enderman chases me home, I'm gonna, ah! Whoa, what the fuck? As much as I wanna sit here and tell you that I was a brave man and fought the enderman head on, I wasn't. In fact, I left. Let me explain why. I am six feet tall. This is not meant to be a flex. It is a matter of fact. Minecraft blocks are estimated to be three feet tall, meaning everything is a lot bigger when you're actually in the game itself. An enderman, however, is three blocks tall, meaning if I laid my eyes on this creature, his lanky, jump-scaring body will be teleporting at me, standing at a staggering nine feet tall. Paired with the fact that I have to physically run away from him, no thank you. Moving on. I walked to a different part of the cave and continued- <laughs> that in real life this spider would have been six feet long it, it, it's terrifying i'm not being a baby i continued my quest and ran into yet another enemy though i was still shaking in my boots it was becoming a little easier to manage Another two days passed and 30 minutes of hard labor, and at this point, I decided to call it quits to head back home. I was actually shocked that in 90 minutes of exploring, I didn't find a single block of iron. I was pretty winded, so I took another seat. Also, my girlfriend came in and gave me water because I was dying. Thank you so much. You're my angel and you look beautiful. Careful, there are wires and stuff. And it was at this moment that I remembered something from earlier. Iron all the way back at my spawn point. There was something that had to be done. We reached the island, but due to our impeccably bad timing, it was yet again another nightfall. And since there were no beds to sleep on, we had to just wait it out. I put down my boat and took a seat. And since we had time, I decided to have a moment to talk about my feelings. Uh, I wanna take a very quick, candid second to say thank you guys. I was so afraid, bro, that I was gonna like release my quitting leak video and then nobody was gonna watch anything after. But I released the quitting league video the videos i've released after have been like nothing but like support and it just like 
my mental health has been like at a 10 out of 10. And if I'm being honest, before I released the video, it was like at a one. I wasn't doing good. But now that that's done, it's like I'm so inspired and happy. I wish I was kidding, bro. I spent the last like five days doing everything I can to make this stream work. It's working now, and it makes me happy that it is. So thank you guys. Just wanted to say that while we wait for daytime. We're done being cringe. Let's go uh, look. It's definitely not daytime. Didn't even come from low. I found Scoosh from a porn game you play. <laughs> Which game is that? <laughs> With daylight back and my weary legs ready, we continued to look for the spawn cave. I searched and I searched and I still couldn't find what I was looking for, but I most certainly found something else. Whoa! Whoa! What the hell? If I fall in here, it would be so depressing. I made a mental note to explore it later and kept going, only to stumble upon a half-finished nether portal. Apparently, it's called a ruined portal, which I've never seen before, but hey, it had some pretty good gear in it. I think. I don't know if you could tell at this point, but I don't really know a lot about Minecraft. As much as I enjoyed our spoils, we were getting heavily distracted. Sure, golden armor for a horse I didn't own was cool, but in reality, I had to focus on the task at hand. I camped yet another night inside of a stone home and waited until the streets were safe again. Oh. Oh. Bro, what the f- I sat in my boat and waited out the lightning storm outside. Uh-oh. Knowing I was doomed to not find any iron back here, I decided to go back to the original big cave near home, and I prayed that Mr. Enderman wasn't waiting there to eat my egg. But that's when I learned something tragic. You see, this entire time I was using a compass to know where I was going. But in every single instance of compasses in humanity ever made ever, a compass points north. And because of it, you can always find your way. But in Minecraft, that's not how compasses work. They point towards your world spawn or a lodestone. I don't know what that is. Meaning I was effectively lost. I know you could technically use that weird debug method you to find out where you are, but I'm an adventurer, so that was off limits. I put my boat in a giant lake of water and I wandered aimlessly. My hope was starting to fade, and so was my body. Maybe I overestimated myself. Maybe humans aren't supposed to live in Minecraft, and maybe... Just maybe, I should have looked up how a compass works before betting my entire life on it. After a few random holes in the wall and a couple hundred paddles later, I was once again the luckiest man on earth. Oh, wait. Wait, that's my house! And that's the- that's the place we dug! You oh! Yay! We enter our house and deposit everything we found in a chest. And finally, we were able to get back to the task at hand. At this point, we've been playing for nearly two and a half hours. I don't even stand that much all week. But I had my goals set, so I braved the cave again. Armed with only my tools, I dug deeper and deeper, running into a couple of enemies in our way. And after over 150 minutes of manual labor, it finally happened. Sure, it was exciting, but I only found three pieces out of the 24 total that I would need to finish this last task. Now, that may sound like a bad thing, but personally, it was the crumb of motivation I needed to keep going. No matter how bad I felt, I continued to dig downward in order to get closer to the bottom, which apparently raises the chances that iron spawns, I guess. Though it should have been smooth sailing from here, <coughs> It wasn't, and since I kind of suck at Minecraft, I completely forgot that I should have more wood on me. So I had no sticks, which meant I had to go all the way back to land and get more wood so I can get more sticks and make more pickaxes to continue. I don't think there will be a way to explain it, how like beautiful this is. I know there's like no shaders or anything, right? It's just base Minecraft, but like actually walking around and like having to remember your path in the cave and having to chop down trees and all that stuff. It's so unique, man. Like I can't, I wish I could put it to words. I am drenched and I probably reek like crazy, but it's such a unique experience. Can you play Minecraft VR with shaders? I can't, I can't. Not until I get a new PC, which I just cannot do yet. Quitting leak content? is what I did for me. It's not the financially sp smart uh, thing to do, but I don't give a shit. Cause I know that my content's good enough 
to get me back there and beyond. Would you say it's a $3,000 experience? I don't regret it, if that's what you're asking. After a monologue, some wood, and a few sticks later, we headed back to the cave where we started our stairs. There was more iron on the way back, which put us closer to the goal. It's been nearly three hours at this point, but progress was being made, and I can honestly say that I was having fun. Very sweaty fun. I took another breather, because I'm that out of shape, and then prepared for my final push. As I dug, I found a really scary looking enchanted skeleton. What is that? Is that a skeleton with something enchanted in his f I didn't want to get destroyed, so I spent one iron bar on making a nifty shield, while also depositing all of my other stuff just in case. By the time I went back down, he was gone, which gave me time to look around and find a lot more iron. There was even some iron stuck in a wall that led to a water cave, which was annoying to get, but as my grandmother once said, every ingot counts. <laughs> After mining just about every single ingot I could, I finally went back to my chest and saw how many I had total. And you're not gonna believe this, but I had 23 out of the 24 iron ingots I needed to make my set of armor. Meaning that if I wasn't so scared earlier, this could have been done. But no, some skeleton had to be enchanted, so I spent the last ingot I needed to build a shield, only for him to leave anyway. I went back down and searched a little more, and finally, I found the final ingot. And also this weird purple area, but we'll explore that later. With my quest accomplished and my iron melted, I was finally able to accomplish what we set out to do. Shirt, to keep my chest strong. Shoes keep my feetsies warm, pants to be the freshest in the club, and finally, a helmet. I got nothing for that one. I'm gonna be honest, I'm, I'm exhausted. Boom, 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 boom. Oh! And so, we were done. So now comes the important question. Is Minecraft a world worth living in? Absolutely. Minecraft has always been a game that encouraged exploration. A game that rewards you for taking your time and collecting whatever you find in the endless world you call your own. And as silly as it sounds, living in Minecraft and having to do everything myself worked really well for this experience. Sure, it was tiring to swim back and forth, my arms were in pain from chopping hundreds of times, and my knees were yelling at me for walking for nearly three hours. But it made every ingot I found that much more special. It made the caves that much more vast. And it made my experience that much more real. I really hope that you enjoyed this experience, and if you would like to watch it live, I'm still playing Minecraft and other games on this treadmill over on my stream. I don't expect the entire world to spend thousands of dollars on an omnidirectional treadmill anytime soon, so if there's any other games you'd like to see me live in, please let me know in the comment section below. I'm gonna go rest my legs and arms and eyes. Please subscribe if you haven't already because we're doing a lot more videos like this and I'd love for you to join us on our journey. There's a pretty cool video that's on the screen right now and you should totally click it. Go ahead, click that video. See what's in that video. I guarantee it's good. Go over there, watch that video. Go, go, get